Well, in the great category of I wasn't aware, I have a list for you. How many of you were aware that elephants are the only animals that can't jump? Hmm. Every time you lick a stamp, you're consuming one-tenth of a calorie. Great diet plan. Okay. Uh, if you've yelled for eight years, seven months, and six days, you would have produced enough sound energy to heat up one cup of coffee. You didn't know. Well, now you're aware. How about this? Were you aware that the strongest muscle in the body is the tongue? Hmm. How about this? No word in the English language rhymes with month. Think it. I know you're all going there. No, nothing rhymes with month. How about I am is the shortest complete sentence in the English language. I am. How beautiful. Now that you're aware, well, it changes your whole life now. Every time you look at an elephant, things will be different. When you start screaming and hollering at others, I just think I'm heating up coffee. Uh-huh. And when you're exercising, just know that this may not be the strongest, but this one is. And, of course, the I am is the great sentence that is so brief, so short, and sums it all up. A lot of times in life, people aren't always aware. And awareness is truly what our spirituality is all about. There's a lot of things that we may say we're not aware of, and that's why we have ancient scriptures. We have the wonderful texts that constantly speak to us to bring about insight, knowledge, understanding, awareness. How beautiful it is that we, we understand this, that the book of the Bible is not just history, and it is in a historical context, but not meant to be read as a literal historical book. Trust me if it was. The writers intended for it to be a history book. They would have included a lot more detail, a lot more history. But the nuances that are there are speaking to us in the category of creating awareness, knowledge, understanding. This is uh, a, a book that is designed to create a sacred awakening within our lives. An awakening to say, aha, oh, I get it. I understand. Now I know how to operate. Now I know how to live in this life. Aren't you so glad that there's a guidebook for living? There really is. It's Life for Dummies 101. It's this wonderful book that you could just open up and say, aha, I see, and I begin to understand the practical, positive principles for everyday living in our life. They're so rich. They're so powerful for our lives. Wow, I just want to know. And when you know and when you're aware, your life is transformed and changed by it. So one of the very first things that we want to understand and become fully aware of is that you are a thinking center within the infinite mind or wisdom of God. What? Let's break that down. You're a thinking center. You're a thinking center. You're a thinking center. Think about it. Draw a circle around you. You're a thinking center within the infinite wisdom, the infinite mind of God. You are included in the infinite wisdom and knowledge of the divine. You were created in the image and likeness. So all of that wonderful opportunity of awareness of your highest and best is already within you. That's right. You came equipped. I love it. I love it when we understand that something came equipped. I bought a Mercedes, a used car that had been uh, given to me, and I was just so thrilled about having this car and so excited about it. You know how you just get in the car, you start driving because you think you know everything, and then you look and say, what are all these German buttons here, you know? The Germans want to do things so different, you know? I had no idea I had heated seats until one summer day I pushed a button and said, why is this hot seat so warm? I thought, is the sunlight coming in? And what's happening here? And I realized, wait a minute, I pressed a button that says heated seats. Now, I didn't ask for it. I didn't get it equipped. I didn't have it put in. I didn't have it installed. It came that way. So, too, your life. You've come this way with infinite possibilities available to you. You are a thinking center in the midst within the infinite mind, the wisdom of God. You may think, well, I never thought about being a thinking person. I guess I've talked, thought for granted. And how true that is. We may laugh at that sentence but, or that thought, that statement that people make because a lot of people don't really think about being a thinking center or really think about the thoughts. So many of them and how important they are 
or that they really have any importance in shaping our destiny or our direction. So we don't pay a lot of attention to that and don't realize, wait a minute, I'm a thinking center. Thought is crucial. Thought shapes my life. Thought shapes my destiny. Thought shapes my direction. And I'm a thinking center even more so, and this is where it gets even better and better, I, within the infinite mind, within the wisdom of the ages. Now, the psalmist gave us some wonderful clues. Psalm 125, verse 2 says, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so God surrounds God's people. Wow, God's there, God's here, God's here, God's here. Wow, all around us, surrounding us. We are in the infinite mind, surrounded by this infinite wisdom. Infinite, unlimited wisdom. Not with any kind of boundaries. Not with any kind of saying, okay, you've exhausted the extent of, lim of wisdom. Infinite, ongoing. You are a thinking center in the infinite mind. Now, not only surrounding us, around us is this wonderful presence of God, but let's go even further as the book of Acts proclaims for us this. For in God, we live and move and have our being. Wait a minute. Surrounding us, behind us, along us, in front of us, all around us, above us, below us, and now in God. You are in God, in that infinite mind, in that infinite wisdom, in that infinite intelligence that we call God. Because our problem right now is we still have shapes and images in our mind of what God is. We're still thinking of God as this wonderful big man up in the sky, living in some wonderful little place called heaven uh, with lots of clouds around, maybe a few angels, a lot of people there, uh, you know, uh, just hanging out together throughout all eternity, singing songs. And we think that's what God is. But, oh, wait a minute. God is infinite intelligence at work in you, around you, for you, through you. And you are in that infinite intelligence, for it's all around you in this wonderful way that you've been created in the infinite mind and infinite wisdom. Here's the kicker. I love this. Is it says, let this mind be in you, as was in Christ Jesus. Let this thinking be in you, that was in Christ Jesus. Let this kind of understanding be in you, that was in Christ Jesus. We're understanding that, wait a minute. This infinite possibilities of mind are available to us. We're in that, in this wonderful, shall we say, soup of wisdom, this wonderful thought, uh, beautiful ba bathing in all kinds of wonderful insight that's available to us, how wonderful it is. And here's the kicker. You're in it all the time. That's right. You're in the infinite mind all the time. It's always there for the intelligence of the universe is within you. But as you study and as you awaken, as you learn, suddenly it begins to stimulate within you and open the doors for more. You learn two plus two is five, right? I think we've got that one down, don't we? Two plus two is five. But didn't that stimulate then? It says, what's three plus three? Oh, wait a minute. What's four plus four? Let's begin to think. And before you know it, we're stimulated with this inquisiting mind that says, I'm searching and seeking for the unfolding of infinite wisdom. And that wisdom has been with us all along. God didn't say, I created humanity, and I created humanity, and I made them really stupid. I made them all blonde. Okay, sorry, blondes. Uh, you know, I made them all, uh, you know, this sort of dumb blonde looking kind of thing. You know, Adam being blonde, Eve being blonde, we're all blonde. Well, we just kind of want to stereotype, unfortunately. Blondes as being those kind of ones who are not so brilliant. That's not God's image at all. Blondes are smart. So it is that all of us are smart. We're all incredibly gifted with infinite wisdom. From the very beginning of time, the creation of humanity was equipped with infinite wisdom. Do you know that the infinite wisdom was there all along for the wheel? It just took someone to stop and begin to put two and two together and say, I think we could create the wheel. The infinite wisdom for the fire was there all along. And people began to say, I think we can make fire. The infinite wisdom, therefore, all kinds of things have been there all along. But what it takes is someone to sit down and welcome the infinite wisdom unfolding within us. And so it is that we understand that we're a thinking center with the opportunities of unlimited wisdom coming to us and unfolding through us and for us. 
as we allow, as we become that channel, as we allow this wonderful image and likeness that we're created in to unfold. You know, and it's impossible for us to think that we have a mind separate from God. You were created in God's image and likeness. So we like, wait a minute, my mind is so full of human things, so full of frailty, we'll call mortal mind. God's mind is divine. Are you telling me that, I, you know, I have the same mind as God? Yes, you do. You have that same opportunity to think, to comprehend, to be aware, to be conscious of as the divine. You are equipped with it. Oh, well, maybe we should press the button for those heated seats in the winter. Maybe we should turn the light on. Maybe we're equipped with the power and electricity. Maybe we should use these things that we're equipped with, that this is available to each and every one of us. A lot of people say, well, wait a minute. Uh, I like your idea, but, you know, let me just get some wisdom. No, it's not about getting. It's not about going out and get. It's not about, like, I don't have and I need to get. Anne, would you give me some wisdom? Or, you know, uh, Denise, would you give me some wisdom? Because I need to get some. I need to get some from somewhere, but it's all there. And the process of learning is simply unfolding infinite wisdom within our lives. It's already been present. Be still and know, Scripture says. Be still and know God, the infinite wisdom of the ages. Be still and awaken. Waken the smarts within you, I'll say. Waken the learnings within you. Waken in all those good education that you got within you. It's in there. You came equipped. Came equipped with this wonderful insight that says, you know, Spirit of God, I allow your wisdom and I allow it to be unfolding through me today that I may speak of that which I'm equipped with, speak and live with that which I'm equipped with. And exist in a way that shows and reveals all the wonderful aspects that I came into this world equipped with. You know, you've got lots of stuff. It's time to start using it, right? You came equipped with all these. You're a deluxe model already put into action. So it's time to say, I'm going to engage all the love that I've been equipped with. I'm going to use it. I'm going to press the button. and I'm going to engage love. I'm going to engage peace because I've been equipped with perfect peace. And I've been equipped with perfect wholeness. And I've been equipped with abundance. And I've been equipped with prosperity. And I've been equipped with all these wonderful things. And the infinite wisdom of God, I'm equipped with it too. So when I'm searching for insight and guidance and direction, I need not look outside. I go within. I don't need to go outside. I go within. For in this stillness and in the quiet, we find the unfolding of this infinite wisdom. For we are this thinking center within the infinite wisdom of God. And so how beautiful it is that there's no way we can ever get into the divine mind because there's no way you can get out of it. You're created with it, okay? You understand that? There's no way to get into the divine mind because there's no way to get out of the divine mind. It's already there. It's not something you seek and get. It's something you awaken to and use and allow. Wow. It's kind of amazing when we think from that perspective of what we've been equipped with that we could start using. They say that we don't use all of our brains. Some of us don't use any part of our brain. There are some times when, you know, we forgot we had a brain, but it's time that we came. Well, I came equipped with a brain. I came with the, equipped with the power of knowing. I came with equipped with the power of understanding. I came with the equipped of the equipped with the power of awareness. Let me use these things to the fullest. Let me unfold and blossom and bloom to the fullest that I was intended to be. This is so our desire when we understand this we then uh, understand the power of directing our thoughts, directing this intelligence, directing our thinking, directing our consciousness, directing our awareness in such a way like an orchestra director. And in today's meditation, we had a visualization experience of us being the orchestra conductor, standing on the podium, tapping the baton, tap, 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 raising the arms and having all the instruments of the orchestra in attention, all the musicians waiting for you to set the tempo, to begin to direct. Well, 
That's the whole thing. The whole universe is saying, waiting with divine, infinite wisdom and knowledge, waiting for you to direct your thoughts like an orchestra, to direct them, to give direction to them so that you might create this beautiful sound of harmony, this music of life, that you might create it to the fullness. So we must become directors. Now, we may think about, uh, you know, all this wonderful intelligence. What do you mean? It's kind of like limitless air, okay? Everyone breathe some air. There's air all around us, right? Is there a point where you're thinking, well, wait a minute, there's not enough air in this room? There's not enough air in Atlanta for all of us? Uh, not enough air on Georgia for us? Not enough air, enough air in the United States? Are we going to run out of air? There's limitless air, correct? And you can breathe and breathe and breathe all you want. You can huff and puff and blow your house down. you still got air, right? There's a limitless air around us. But we sometimes direct that air in certain ways. How many of you have blown up a balloon? Mm -hmm. You go to a party, you're celebrating a party, some great occasion. You blow up these balloons. <gasps> you're directing that air into this balloon, correct? And we then direct all that air. Although there's infinite air, we may direct it in a certain way. So it is that we're called to direct our thinking, our infinite intelligence that we have access to, to direct it in a way that unfolds for our highest and best. We live as a director of an orchestra. We live as if we are one that may blow up balloons, directing air in a certain way. But we live in this world of limitless oxygen, limitless air for us to engage in. So we choose how we will use that air or how we will direct the orchestra or how we will think. We're in infinite wisdom. Wow. There's possibilities of thinking all kinds of things. There's possibilities of awakening to all kinds of wisdom. There's possibilities to awakening to all kinds of insight. Awareness is ours. Things that you didn't know, wait a minute, uh, suddenly they're being revealed to you. The ancient scriptures talk about the Holy Spirit will bring all things to remembrance. And as a little kid, I loved that scripture. I was a preacher's kid. I quoted that every time I went to take a test. Okay, Holy Spirit, help me bring everything to my remembrance because I can't remember half a social studies class. I can't remember history class. I can't remember al algebra. Bring it to my remembrance, you know. And what this whole thing is that the Spirit of God is bringing to you the infinite wisdom that you were created in and unfolding it for you. And you will have these wonderful aha moments. How many of you have these moments where you're like, dang, that was kind of a, I had a smart thought. Where'd that one come from? You know, me? I had a brilliant thought. I had a great idea. I had a, whoa, what was this? I got a great idea of knowing what to, I had a creative thought. These wonderful God thoughts that awaken you to something that said, I thought, wow, where did that one come from? You know, I just really had a brilliant idea come to me. A God thought, so, you know, something that maybe looked, I didn't think I was that smart that I knew this one, but hey, I did. How many of you have lost something and you couldn't find it? And then you turn to the divine and just say, infinite wisdom, help me to remember where that was placed. It's not lost. I've just forgotten where I placed it. I can remember it very distinctly in my house in Jefferson Park. Uh, we were getting ready to show the house, and I had set my keys down on the countertop, and the doorbell rang, and oh, there was someone coming for a showing of the house. And quickly, I grabbed everything on the countertop and slid it into the drawer. I went to find my keys. They were nowhere. I couldn't find my keys. I searched high. I searched low. Finally, I had to just stop and say, be still, spirit, bring this infinite wisdom, knowledge to my remembrance. Where would those keys be in the sudden look in the drawer? The drawer, why would they be in the drawer? Then I realized I'd laid them on the counter when I scooped up everything and shoved it in the drawer. You know, that kind of cleaning house that we all do, out of sight, out of mind, you know, shove it on the rug kind of thing. You know, when we kind of pick up and make sure everything looks really tidy. Ah, there was my key. So it is that infinite wisdom, infinite understanding, infinite knowledge is there. You're equipped with this wonderful gift for our lives. But quite often what happens is we distort and pervert this basic knowledge because we're creatures of habit, and sometimes we blow up some balloons, and we use that oxygen, we use that infinite air, we use it in a way 
that is just creating something that we don't want, but we keep blowing up balloons because, well, that's a creature of habit. We keep thinking ideas over and over again of fear, lack, limitation. We keep thinking them over and over again because we're creatures of habit. And so we keep putting our energy, our thought life, our awareness is going into, I think I'm afraid. I think I'm in lack. I think I don't have. I think I, I'm just constantly putting all my energy into that. Wait a minute. But infinite possibilities are there. You are a thinking center in the midst of infinite possibilities. So why do we choose lack, fear, doubt? Why do we fear, welcome Sickness, thoughts of disease. Well, because we're comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Because we're so accustomed to it. Because of our bad habits, we go there all the time. We constantly, you know, entertain these uh, things within our lives that constantly set the thoughts that go over and over again. Where we distort and, per and sort of pervert this infinite intelligence that's there, this wisdom of God that says, you could think good thoughts, but why are you thinking bad thoughts? You could think of blessing, but why are you thinking of cursing? Well, you could think of prosperity, but why are you thinking of lack? Well, anyone have an answer for that? Why do we think the negative instead of the positive? Here's the thing. There's a beautiful poem by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. She says, some ships drive east, some drive west, by the same winds that blow. Tis the set of the sails and not the gale that determine which way they go. It's where you set your sails. Infinite knowledge and wisdom is like a wind. Whoosh. It's rushing through. It's blowing around you at all times. Infinite wisdom surrounds you, and infinite understanding is available for you, and awareness is yours to claim. You have to set your sail in that direction. Let me tell you this. The wind that takes you to failure is the same wind that takes you to success. You have to choose how you set your sail. It's up to you. If your sail is set for success, great. You're now being driven towards that. If your sail is set for failure, you're now being driven towards that. It's the same gale. It's just how you've set your sail. So it is that infinite wisdom and knowledge is yours. How have you set your sail to embrace it? to welcome the insight, the understanding. You know, this unhappiness that we have in our life, I'm going to tell you this, it's an inside job, not an outside job. Because it's how we look at life and how we, the thoughts we want to entertain and where we've set our sails. Because it's so interesting that people say, oh, it's a raining day, I hate rain, rain has ruined everything. It's not the rain that ruined it. It's your thought about the rain that ruined it. Because you could change your thought to say, I'm so glad it rained. I'm so glad it rained. Rain is washing away things and bringing about cleansing and nurturing the ground. I'm so glad it rained. Today's a good day because it rained. You see the difference there? It all depends on how you set your sail. Your unhappiness is an inside job. If you're unhappy, it's because the thoughts that you're entertaining, the direction you've set your sail. It's something that happens within your life that you can change. And isn't this beautiful? That You know, it's this wonderful ability that we can accept responsibility for our thoughts and the shaping of our day. Isn't that great? We get to accept the responsibility and you think, responsibility and the privilege. The privilege to make any kind of change that we want at any time whatsoever. To say, you know what, I was thinking it's a rainy day, a bad day, and now I'm thinking it's a good day, and I'm so glad it rained. I shifted everything, and I set my sail in a new direction. I may say, you know what, I feel like sometimes I know nothing, but I welcome infinite wisdom to unfold with me. And in that knowing, in that thinking, suddenly I find my sail is set in the direction of infinite knowledge. I accept the responsibility for my life. And I accept the, the privilege of creating a beautiful and powerful day. For positive thinking is not just sitting around holding good thoughts. 
and filling the mind. A lot of people think, you know, if I just think, think, keep thinking, you know, we got affirmations on our refrigerator, affirmations on our mirror, affirmations on the rear of our car, affirmations coming out of our purse, affirmations in our back pocket, affirmations in our chest pocket, affirmations in our hat, affirmations on your shoes. When you put your shoes on, affirmations in the drawer, we've got affirmations everywhere, right? We keep thinking, oh, positive thought, positive thought. Just keep thinking positive thought. And the more and more we kind of want to see, how do I fill my life with positive thoughts? And again, what we're doing is trying to fill our life rather than understanding that we wake up to the thought, not fill ourselves with the thought. Because sometimes we're trying so hard. I'm trying to be positive. I'm just trying to be positive. I'm working on being positive. You know, I just got to work, 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 work. It's hard to be positive. It's difficult to be positive. It's difficult to be faith-filled. It's difficult to believe. No, no. You see, that power is within you when you awaken to it. Because you're a thinking center in the midst of infinite possibility possibility of your highest and best is already there when you wake up to it. There's no point in trying to be more spiritual because you can be no more spiritual than you are already are. You just have to wake up to your spirituality. Wait a minute. Shouldn't we be coming to church to learn how to be more spiritual? Shouldn't we go to classes to be more spiritual? Pastor, aren't you imparting education and wisdom to us to know how I need to get me some spirituality? I want to get it, get it, get it. No. Awaken to it. It's already there. You came equipped with it. You came equipped with infinite possibilities, infinite mind, the very mind of God to be within yourself. When you begin to then realize that you are capable, you don't fake capable. Like a lot of people say, you know, the good thing is fake it till you make it, you know. Maybe that's our whole thing. You know, just start believing. I'm trouble believing, you know, I, I need to fake it. But when you really believe you're capable, you don't fake capable. You know you're capable. You live you're capable, right? David, uh, from the ancient scriptures of the Old Testament, the story is our story, your story, my story. We're all David. David then being confronted by Goliath. He comes forward before the children of Israel who are looking for a warrior to go and defeat this great giant. There wasn't a single man in Israel who felt capable. And people thought, well, maybe we could fake some capability, right? Like, well, give me that armor. Give me that sword. Give me a helmet. Give me some, you know, some uh, metal on me. Give me some, you know, weapons. Give me some all these kind of things. And I'm going to try to go out. Are you kidding? They said, I'm not capable. And not a single man in Israel wanted to come forward. Suddenly, here's this little shepherd boy, David, coming out of the blue. He says, I'll go destroy the giant for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> you? <laughs> a little kid? All the men of the army of Israel are feeling they're not capable. What makes you think? What makes you think? What makes you think you're capable? Well, David knew he was capable. And when you know it, you don't fake it. Now Saul, the king of Israel, says, well, if you're going into the battle, young boy, we need to dress you up. We're going to put some armor on you. We're going to put a helmet on you. We're going to, I'll, I'll give you the king's armor, the best armor we've got in all of Israel. I'll give you this sword. I'll give you this shield. You know, little boy David, you're going to just see him now weighted down in the king's armor, going, what? I'm capable. I don't need to be propped up with stuff to fake it till I make it, because I already know I'm capable. I just need a sling and some and five little stones. And he goes down, picks up the riverbed, some simple smooth stones, and he's, I got it. I got this. I got this. Wow, could you imagine if this is our story? It's sharing with us this powerful awareness that when you awaken to the infinite possibilities within you, you're capable. Uh, you have to believe you're capable. You're capable of amazing things. You're capable of healing. You're capable of your individual prosperity. You're capable of your blessing. You're capable of doing incredible things. You're capable of loving. 
you're actually capable of forgiving. You're capable of grace. You're capable of creating mercy and joy and peace. You're capable of a lot of stuff, but you've got to believe that you're capable. And it's not something you're looking for outside of your life to fill your life, to get, to go and get, but to simply awaken. So what are we doing here? We're waking up. That's what we do every Sunday. We come to wake up in a fresh new way, waking up to our highest and best, to waking up to the understanding that the power of God's already in us, working through us, all around us. In God, we live and breathe and have our being and celebrate our life. And that's how we understand that we're very capable of all kinds of amazing things. You don't make it happen in life because you say it. You say it because uh, what you say is true. You don't say like, oh, I say things and I hope they're going to be true. You've got to believe they're true. You've got to understand that you are created in this wonderful image and you start believing about yourself what is already true. And what is already true is you're a thinking center in the midst of divine infinite possibilities. Wow. I could start thinking that I'm a success. Yes, you could. I could start thinking I'm, I'm whole. Yes, you could. Well, I, I could actually start thinking that I'm prosperous. Yeah, you could. I could start thinking that I don't live in lack. Uh-huh, you could. I could start thinking all kinds of things, infinite possibilities for the wisdom of God is mine. I could be capable of amazing things. That's right, you are. Say it with me, I'm capable. I'm capable. Say it again, I am capable. All right. When you start proclaiming this, you understand that positive thinking is not creating power. It simply attunes you. And awakens you to the power. And when you're awake to it, you don't need to convince yourself. No, you don't need to convince yourself. You know what convincing is? It's kind of a wrestle or a dance. It's kind of like, well, maybe, I don't know, kind of yes, could be. I think I can, but no, I know. i got to convince myself, you can't. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. Come on, you can. No, I can't, I can't. You see, that's the convincing energy that we put out there. You don't need to convince yourself. For convincing is simply wrestling with this. So what was the beautiful text you read today in this beautiful paraphrase? Romans 12. Don't let the world around you mold your life from without. But let God remold your mind from within. It's not getting and filling in. Instead, it's awakening and releasing out. We've got it all backwards, don't we? We're thinking, I gotta go somewhere and get something. I gotta go, oh, I gotta go to Denise. She's gonna get me some. I'm gonna, you know, get something from her in her workshop. Or I'm gonna go to Ann and get energy healing, or I'm gonna get Reiki from someone else. I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna get all this. All these things are wonderful. But you awaken to what's already within you. These things are the tools that help in the awakening process of what you are already capable of, that you don't need convincing, but that you simply need to be awakened to that are there. So don't try to fill your mind from without. I invite you to a day-to-day -day journey of releasing from within. Wow. You mean from within? Well, what's the scripture say? The kingdom of heaven is within. No, no, no. The kingdom of heaven, it's up in the sky, in the clouds. You know, God's up there with Jesus. Uh-huh. And my loved ones and angels and they're harping. Someone's harping, always harping up there. Uh, you know, I know that that's my heaven. It's streets of gold up there, up there. Yeah, right. It's eternity. It's pearly gates, right? Those are all metaphors of what's been intended for you within. Streets of gold of a feeling of abundance within. The many mansions, the many rooms of the divine presence within. The peace of God within in consciousness. The wonderful awareness of divine presence within. All of that is within. So today, we could choose to release this, couldn't we? We could let some out. We could be like a dam, the Hoover Dam, and release some of the waters that have been held back, right? 
and flood the streams going down. We could release some things into the world, right? I could let go of some love, some grace, some mercy, some wisdom, some infinite knowledge, some understanding. I could let it out. I could release it today. When we let go of the idea that I got to get it and put it in, only realizing instead, I just need to release and let go. So today, I want you to understand that uh, this beautiful passage within us is to not let any world around you shape you from without, but awaken, not filling up from without, but awakening. Wake up, wake up, wake up to the very truth. You are a thinking center. That's right. In the midst of the infinite possibilities. Infinite possibilities. Amen.